Hello guys, I'm Yadik Reddy and welcome to my channel HVI Tutorials. In this video, I'll explain about how you can attach the screenshots to the extent report. So whenever you are working with automation, you have to capture the screenshots based on your requirement, right? Some people's requirement is to capture the screenshots only when there is a test failure. And some people will capture the screenshots for every test step, right? And some people will capture the screenshots only at the end of the test, irrespective of the test status. Some people will capture the screenshots on every test ending. Right? So even though if the test is failed or passed, they don't care. They have to capture the screenshots of the last screen they are executing. Right? Like this, we will have different, different type of requirements, guys. But in every requirement, we are capturing the screenshot. Right? So once you capture any screenshot, you have to attach the screenshot to the report. So if you are keeping the screenshot inside the local machine only, and if you are not attaching it to the report, then what is the use of the screenshots? So it is of no use. Right? So that is why whenever you are capturing the screenshots, you have to attach them to the report also. So that when you look at the report, it will be easy to understand why the test is failed and you can understand the screenshots and all those things. Right? So that is why we will see how to attach the screenshots to the extent report in this video guys. Right? So in extent reports, we can attach the screenshots at two levels. One is at the test level and the other one is at the log level. So I will clearly explain you all these things guys. So even at the test level also, we have different options and even at the log level also, we have different options. So all those options I will clearly explain for you. Fine. So let's jump into the Eclipse. So here, let me create one class file. And let me open the chapter six. So I'm going to remove the entire thing. So this I don't require. So this is the base, right? So we are just creating the extent reports engine and we are creating the spark reporter instance and we are flushing here, right? So now we want to add the test and we want to capture the screenshot and attach the screenshots to the test, right? So first we will see at the test level and then we will go to the log level guys, fine? So first let me create one test here, extent reports dot create test. So every time I'm adding only the test name, right? I'm not adding any description. So this time we will add the description also so that we will understand how the description also will be displayed, right? So I will say test one or screenshot test one. So this is my test name and give a comma and after that provide the description guys. This is for attaching the screenshots to the test at test level fine i'm giving some meaningful description that's it so what you can do you can just mention everything in the next line and after this we want to log some information right so let's log some information This is a info message. That's it. Fine. So this is how we usually create any test. And when we execute that, you can see the test and the output also, right? So first let me execute this and then we will capture the screenshots and all. So this is the test. So this is how your description will look like guys. So whenever you add any description to the test, it will come directly under the timing here. So just below the timing, your test description will come and above the timing, your test name will come. Fine. So now I want to attach the screenshot to the test level. So if you are attaching any screenshot to the test level, your screenshot will appear just below the description. Fine. If you are attaching any screenshot to the log level, then your screenshot will appear here. For every log event, you can attach the screenshot. Fine. So let me show you the sample here. So this is a sample one guys. So if you are attaching any screenshot at the test level, your screenshot will appear here. So if you click on that, it will open, right? And if you are attaching any screenshot at the log level, then it will be displayed like this. If you click on this, it will be open. So when you click on any of these screenshots, the same way it will be opened. But the place where you are attaching the screenshots is different, right? So if you want to attach the screenshot at the test level, 
there is a different configuration. And if you want to attach a screenshot at the log level, there is a different configuration. Both are looking like similar only, but a little bit different guys. Fine. So first we will see this one. Okay. So let me close this. Okay. So if you want to attach any screenshots at the test level, there are two methods available in the extent reports guys. So these two methods will internally have some overloaded methods also. I will show you all those things guys. Don't worry. So the method names are add screen capture from base 64 string and add screen capture from path. So by the method names itself, you can see that one is requiring the base 64 string and the other one will require the path, right? So whenever you are working with any automation tool to capture the screenshot, there will be so many different formats, right? So for example, if you take Selenium, in Selenium, you can capture the screenshots using three formats. One is using file and the other one will accept the base 64 and the other one will be byte array, right? So whenever you capture any screenshot, it will return file or byte array or base 64 string, right? So using any of these, you can capture the screenshot in the Selenium, but other tools, we are not sure. So based on the configuration in those tools, there might be a different option also. But in every tool, you can capture the screenshot and store the screenshot inside the local machine. So this configuration will be present in any automation tool guys. So now we will see both of these things guys. So if you want base 64 or image, first you need to capture the images, right? So for that, we need the Selenium library and also the web driver manager library, right? So these two things I'll just copy and I'll paste it in this POM file. And let me save this. So let me tell you what exactly I'm trying to do guys. So I want to open the browser and then capture the screenshot and then store that screenshot into my local machine, then attach the screenshot. So that is one way. And the other way is I want to use the Selenium to open the browser and capture the screenshot as a base 64 image and then attach that to the extent reports. So both of these things I will show you. So for any of these things, first we need to open the Selenium browser, right? I mean Chrome browser using Selenium, right? So that is what exactly I'm trying to do. So now these things I have added and then we need some code for opening the browser here, right? Static web driver. So I'm guessing everybody already know how to work with the Selenium and all, right? So how to capture the screenshots using Selenium. So if you don't know these things, please go and refer to my previous videos guys. I have already tons of videos on Selenium. So you can watch how to capture the screenshots in all the three formats. So all the three formats also I have covered. So you can watch those things and learn guys, fine. So let me just import the web driver reference. And here, driver equal new Chrome driver. And even before initiating the driver instance, I need to initiate the web driver manager thing, right? So I'm not using system.set property here, but instead of that, I'm using the web driver manager. Chrome driver dot setup. Right. And after this, I want to navigate to any website. So let me take Google as the example, guys. So this is the URL. And after this, I want to capture the screenshots. So I need the screenshots capturing code also, right? So in the test ng playlist, we already have the screenshots capturing code. So I'll just copy it from this. So let me copy this entire method. It's a very small thing only guys. I can actually create here, but instead of wasting the time, I'm just doing like this. Okay. Let me make this a static. Let me remove this entire thing here also. Okay, so this is for capturing the screenshot and storing that in my local machine, right? So it will capture the screenshot and it will store the image also into my local machine. So I have to pass the file name while I'm calling this method, right? So this is fine, but we need the base64 also. So for that we will create another method, but here also, whenever you call this, I want to return the file path, okay? Get absolute path. And let me just change this to string because when you capture the screenshot, you will store the screenshot into your local machine. 
but to attach that i need the path right because here this method is accepting the path as a variable so i need the path from this method so that is why i am returning the path from here and let me create another method here just a overloaded method you can say so i am not passing any file name here so when you don't pass any file name i want to return the base64 image of that one so here let me change this to base64 and when you use base64 it will return the string value right the base64 code it will return so let me name this variable also base64 code and i want to return this code value here so here i'm not storing in my local machine i'm simply capturing the screenshot and storing this base64 code and i'm returning that code directly back to the methods where i'm using that okay so now the screenshot capturing code is ready and browser is also opening here perfectly and let's close the browser after this report creation right so driver dot quit so this is good so now we want to add the methods here right so let's add this first method so add screen capture from base64 string which requires only one parameter first that is base64 code so if you want to get the base64 code you have to call this method right so let's call it here you can directly call here also guys there is no difference actually but let me call it here string base64 code I'm calling it and storing the value inside this variable right so in the similar way I will store the path also so let me call the second method so we are actually opening the Google website right so I'll just name this one as google.jpg we need to pass the file name so I'm passing the file name so it will capture the screenshot and store it in my local machine and then it will return the path of that file also right so it is going to create one folder in my project directory that is called screenshots and within that it will store the screenshot so these things you already knew right i'm not explaining all these things guys because it will take a lot of time right so now both of these things ready so let me copy this one and paste it here so this is for one test so let me copy the same one here and change this to two and in this we have another overloaded method right add screen capture from base64 string in this we have overloaded method so what exactly is that overloaded method so apart from this base64 code you can actually pass one title also so whatever the image that you are capturing for this image you can provide one title also so let me just give some title i will show you how it will be displayed in the ui guys google home page so this is the title fine and similarly let me add the same two things so this will be my third test and this will be my fourth test so here what i'm going to do is i'll use the other method that is add screen capture from path so i'll use the path here okay so all the four methods i'm showing you in one go guys that's it right so let me rename this even for this method also we have a overloaded method that will accept the title as a parameter fine so like this so now four things are actually created right so let me just run this so browser is opened and screenshot captured and report is also generated so we have the four test cases here you can see test one test two test three test four the first two tests are actually capturing the screenshot using base64 image and the third and fourth are using the normal image image from the path right so if you open the first test you can see there is something called base64 image right so for base64 images you will not have any preview here guys so if you look at the sample report here we have something called preview right so that means you can see the image even before opening the image you can see some preview of the image right so this kind of preview will not be available if you are using the base64 format fine so when you click on that the image will be opened 
but you will not have any preview here fine so if you click on the second one so for the second one also we have used only the base64 code but we have provided some title right so for this image if you want to provide any title you can do that the title will be displayed exactly below the image guys fine so whenever you are capturing multiple screenshots and attaching it to the uh, test you have to provide the title right in order to differentiate between all the screenshots so actually you can pass multiple images also guys i will show you that one also okay so when you are doing that this title will help you so by this title you can understand that this is the google home page image right so this is how you have to capture and attach the screenshot to the extent reports using base64 format and then test 3 so here we are actually capturing the screenshot and storing into our local machine and we are using that path right that file path to attach the screenshot to the extent reports so in this format you can see the preview also right so this is how the preview will be looking like right so if you open the file it will be opened so while opening the file you will not have any difference guys even this one also will show you the same thing even this one also will show you the same thing but the preview will not be available for the base64 images and the preview will be available for these things that is the only difference guys fine and here also the fourth one is with the title so you see just below the image you have the title right so you can easily understand okay this screenshot is a google home page screenshot right so now let's do one more thing that is adding multiple screenshots let me copy this here so this will be my third test this will be fourth and this will be fifth so in the third test i'll try to add multiple images guys fine so like this i'm adding four images basically fine so here i'll say home page one home page two home page three and home page four just to show you we can add that so many images also to the test so whenever you are working with automation if, if you are capturing multiple screenshots you can attach all those screenshots also at the test level so that is what i'm trying to show you here so the next one is this one let me repeat this and let me change this to six So this time I'm adding five guys. One, two, three, four, five. So in this scenario, I'm actually adding the same screenshot, but multiple times. But in your case, you might add different different screenshots, right? So let me run this. So the first one is base 64 image only one image without title and the second one base 64 image with title and the third one is base 64 images only multiple images you see under each image you are getting the title right so this is the home page one this is the home page two this is the home page three and this is the home page four like this you can add multiple images guys there is no limit actually right and the fourth one is normal image like from the path right fifth one is from the path only but with the title and sixth one is multiple images from the path you see under each image you can find the title home page one home page two home page three home page four home page five like this you can attach multiple screenshots at the test level also fine so now the test level is completed and let's see the log level so let me copy this thing even at the log level also it is very much similar guys but there is small difference also and there are some extra options also provided at the log level i will show you all the options so here this will be seven and here let's change this to log level fine so let me actually minimize this okay so now after logging this i want to log another event called fail so you can actually attach the screenshots for every log event guys for every log event you can actually attach a screenshot like for info fail pass warning skip for all the log events you can actually attach the screenshot fine so i'm just considering the fail because whenever there is a test failure we will usually add the screenshot right so that is why i'm adding the fail method here 
So under the fail method, there are so many overloaded methods, right? We have already covered the first method that is markup and the third method also that is normal message, right? So using markup only, we will create the labels and if you want to pass any XML data or JSON data, you can pass the data. So all these things can be done using markup, right? And if you want to pass any normal text, you can use the, this thing. And if you want to log any exception, you are going to use this throwable, right? So now we will use the media and details comma media, throwable comma media. So all these three methods we are going to use guys, right? So first let's use the fail method. So under this fail method, we have to pass the media, right? But if you directly access the media class, there will be nothing in that media class. So what you need to do? You need to access this media entity builder class, not the media class. You need to access the media entity builder class. Access that. So within this, you can find the same methods guys. Create screen capture, create screen capture. But here we have the name as add, but here we have the name as create. That is the only difference. But apart from that, you can see everything is same, right? So there are actually two methods only create screenshot capture from base 64 and create screen capture from path. So under these two methods, we have overloaded methods. So we have already seen those things, right? So I'll use the base 64 and also I'll use the normal image also. Okay. I'll use both of these things and I'll show you guys. Don't worry. And one more thing guys, once you access these things, you have to call something called build. So when you call the build method, then only it will return media instance. This method actually requires a media instance, right? So when you call this method, it will return the media entity builder only, but we have to use the media instance. So for that, we have to use the build method. So this build method will return the media instance internally. So we have to use the build method here also. And here, I'll use the other one that is from path. So this is how you can actually capture that screenshot and attach it to the extent reports using this log options. So even here also, if you want to add all these kinds of methods, you can add guys like passing the title and all you can pass. Okay. So let's do that one also. Okay, we'll do one thing. Why don't we do like this? So the seventh test is for base 64 things and eighth test is for normal images from the path basically. So here let me pass the value that is Google home page. Okay. So I have created two more tests one for using this base 64 thing and one for using the path, right? We need to add the semicolon here. Yeah. So now let me run this. So if you look at the seventh and eighth, both are failed because we added the fail event there. So just click on the seventh one. So this is how your log event will be guys. So if you are using the base 64 image here also, you will not have any preview. The image will be attached, but you will not have any preview. If you click on that, the image will be displayed. And here we are using the title. So just below the image, the title is displayed. And if you click on this, the image will be opened. And for the eighth test, you can directly see the preview because it is loaded from the path, right? So like this, you can see the image and here also you can see the image. The only difference is here we don't have any title, but here we have the title, right? So this is the normal thing. And we have few more overloaded methods in the fail, right? So let's use those things. So this will be my ninth one and this will be 10th. So the first overloaded method is fail. So this media is completed, right? Next we will see string details comma media. So if you want to pass any message along with the media, then you can do that. So here we are actually passing the text message, right? Like this is an info message kind of thing. So similarly, if you want to pass any text along with the media, you can do that also. So let me show you that. So the first parameter will be your details and here also your details. And the second parameter will be your media. 
and even here also the same thing. I'm using the same text, but you can use the different text also guys. So now let me run this and see how it look like. 9th and 10th we need to see. You see 9th, the details will be displayed on top of the image guys. The title will be displayed below the image, but the details will be displayed on top of the image. Now the details are displayed and the image is also displayed here, right? So you can see in both the scenarios it is same, right? Even for this one also, the details are displayed and along with the image. Here also the details are displayed and image is displayed, then title is displayed here, right? So the next things are, let me copy this thing again. So this will be 11 and this will be 12. So what is the next overloaded method in the fail? So the next overloaded method is throwable comma media. That means if you want to log any exception, you can log the exception along with the screenshot. So whenever there is a test failure, you will have the uh, exception details also, right? So you can log the exception details along with the screenshot. Instead of logging the normal string details, you can log the exception details and the media also. So let's do that. For that, we first require some exception details here, right? So let me create the throwable instance here. So in the last class, we have created the runtime exception, right? Now we will create the throwable instance only here directly. This is a throwable exception. Just I'm providing some message, a custom message guys. So let me copy this T. So instead of passing these details, you have to pass the throwable instance here, right? So let's pass this throwable instance. So let me run this 11 and 12, we need to look. So just open the 11th. So you can see instead of details, now this time we got the exception details, right? The exception details are logged and below that the image is there, fine. So the same thing is here also. And even if you open this here also, first exception details are there and along with that the image is uh, captured, right? So this is how you can actually attach the screenshots to the extent reports guys. You can attach the screenshots at the test level and also at the log level. If you are attaching the screenshots at the test level, there are few limited options. So the limited options are because you cannot log any exception to the test level. You can only log any exception under the logs only, right? So that is why these options will not be available at the test level, fine? So now you have learned how to attach the screenshots in all possible ways, guys. So in one of the class I have clearly told you, right? Like when you are logging any event, there are so many overloaded methods. So now we have covered all the overloaded methods. Am I correct? We have seen the markup, we have seen the media, we have seen the string details and also throwable string details comma media, throwable comma media. All the overloaded methods are covered. So that is for this video guys. If you have any doubts, please mention them in the comment section below. And if I want to cover any other topic, please mention that also in the comment section below guys. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.